purpose. Huh? Yeah? <laughs> it's tough here, huh? Pa. No? We seem to see a lot of freedom here. A lot of freedom, yeah? But only for people who like to practice a lot of freedom. Hmm? <clears throat> For people, you know, who have difficulties with their practice, oh, it's tough. <laughs> because we have hardly anything to do, yeah? The monastery is small, it is secluded. Yeah? Just in the morning a little bit after the meal and then in the afternoon sweeping and cleaning the monastery. Yeah? The, the smaller you keep the place, the less is there to do. Yeah? And the more time you have to practice. And like my master said, you know, I mean, when we become ordained as bhikkhus, or when we are here in the monastery, our work is, the only work that we have to do is walking meditation, sitting meditation, and for some people, standing meditation. That's our work. That's the real work of a <coughs> recluse. Anything else is not the work of a recluse. We are looking for, for the path out, <clears throat> path out of Dukkha. And that's probably what brought you to Buddhism, Dukkha, or? Yeah. Yeah. There are lots of Dukkha, especially nowadays in Europe. That's, that's changed a lot. More, more and more and more stress, yeah? Working, earning money, earning money, earning money. And then you go into the grave and you have nothing left. <laughs> Anicca, Anicca, Anatta, Dukkha. The three characteristics that hold true for the whole universe. And the universe has Samte Lokatat. What is it translated in English? Samte Lokatat? Three, three realms of uh, existence? Or three? No. I don't know. <laughs> what is it? Planes Three planes of existence, and the realms are 31 <coughs> realms of existence. Yeah. Okay. The Rupa realm, the Arupa realm, and what is it, the other one? Third one? I can't remember. Central realm? Central realm, that is, yeah. That's our realm. <coughs> What is that? Impermanence. Yeah. I mean, we know it. We see it every day. Yeah. In, the, in, in Europe, probably better than here. Yeah. The, the flowers are blooming, and then the flowers die, and the next year the flowers are blooming, and then they die. The leaves turn yellow, and then they come back green, and then turn yellow again, and then come back green. Yeah. Everything. There's nothing there, no, there's nothing constant. And then we don't have to look outside, you know, we just have to look inside and then everything is changing. Huh? The thought that comes disappears. The feeling that comes yeah, disappears. <clears throat> the memory that comes disappears. <clears throat> and the body, yeah, I mean, it stays on for a while, yeah, but it also disappears. So what do we rely on? What is there constant in this, in our world? Huh? Is there anything constant? Is there anything not changing? Because our thoughts, ideas, feelings are constantly changing. But somehow there is something within us, you know, that says, you know, we are eternal. Huh? There's some, some sort of deep belief in us that we are eternal. <clears throat> yeah, and, and, my, and my Master Lunga Mahabha said, yes, there is something eternal, the eternal tourist, yeah? <laughs> the chitta that goes from one realm to the next, and then goes to another realm, and then goes to another realm, yeah? Always turning around in the, yeah, in the hamster wheel. That is, yeah? the chitta is the only thing that is eternal. Everything else changes. <clears throat> So it is like, it is like, you know, when we were young, you know, and we have these soap apples, you know, we create these soap apples, run after them, and the moment we try to catch them, that disappear. Yeah? 
Just like feelings, yeah? You hang after nice feelings, whoops, disappear. Whoops, disappear. Yeah? You try to run away from unpleasant feelings, yeah? and they also disappear. Our thoughts disappear. Our memories disappear. That's why we have to bring up. Yeah? When we want to memorize, we have always have to bring up these memories. Just like we have to create these soap bubbles that we run after and then they disappear. That is our life. Yeah? <clears throat> Lots of fun. Yeah, I mean, the children have fun, you know, running after these soap bubbles, but in the evening they get tired. <clears throat> and we're running after our feelings. Like the dog, you know, like this German dachshund, yeah? I mean, you, you bind a sausage in front of him, yeah? And you supply some tin cans, yeah? So he's running after the nice things and running away from the noise. If he would stop, you know, I mean, the sausage would, would be there, you know, and, and the noise would stop. But we can't stop, yeah? We have to run and run and run and run, yeah? Marcus, yeah? Run after this, run after that, run away from this, run away from that. <clears throat> we have not learned, you know, how to stop and see and just be. All our, all our thoughts, all our imaginations, everything that we paint, yeah? We hope that it comes true. And we hope the next comes true. And then the next comes true. And then at the end of our life, what have we achieved? Nothing. Yeah, we have wasted our life as a human being. The life of a human being is very precious. The Lord Buddha said, it is very precious. It is very difficult to attain to a human life. And it is very difficult as a human being to attain to the true Dhamma. And it is very difficult as a human being that attained to the Dhamma <clears throat> or, or found the right Dhamma to... to to meet an Arahant or, or a Buddha. A lot of people in Thailand, Pa, yeah, have met, a Buddha, have met an Arahant, yeah, and they met the true Dhamma, and they still don't put enough effort in their practice. Mechi <laughs> Kotema. I play, I find. <laughs> Yeah, that's our life. Eating, eating, drinking, thinking, sleeping, sleeping, working, working. Yeah? And all our life, you know, we, 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 we put all our effort, you know, in our life into maintaining this body. Yeah? And then at the end, this body dies, and all our work was in, in vain. We've never looked after the driver. We've never looked after the chitta. Because that is the one thing that goes into the next life. But we looked after our body very, body very well. Eh? And when you come from Europe, you know, yeah? All these exercises, we have to exercise, we have to train, we have to get the right nutrition, and so on, and so on. All these ideas about, you know, the body, yeah? And then this body dies, and all our effort oh, oh, yeah, is in vain. Because this body has to die. And we know that from the beginning of, you know, from, from the beginning of our birth, that this body has to die. <clears throat> But we can use it. Yeah. And that's where the Dhamma comes in. That's where the Lord Buddha comes in. Yeah. He said, there is a way out. There is a way out of birth and death. There is a way out of the hamster wheel. Running, running, running. Yeah. I mean, when we look at our lives yeah, and, and, and compare it to a hamster wheel, there's no difference. From one life to the next, you know, we run and run and run. Sometimes, you know, the hamster wheel is golden. Sometimes it's an iron cage. Yeah. When we are in prison or sometimes when we are in hell, you know, it's very dark, yeah, and so on, and so on. But it doesn't change, you know, we're still running, yeah, wanting, wanting. And that's where all the dukkha comes in. The dukkha is created through our desires, through wanting, wanting this, not being satisfied with that, not wanting that, 
wanting to be or not wanting to be, wanting to meet or not wanting to meet, and so on. That's where the desire, that's where the dukkha comes from. If you don't want, there's no dukkha. And we can experience that very easily. Even the moment we go into samadhi, there's no dukkha. Wow. Because there are no thoughts. And if there's no thoughts and no memories, you know, there's no wanting. We don't want to change anything when we are in samadhi. We don't desire anything. The first thought when we are in samadhi, oh, this is so nice, I want to stay forever, is when we are actually out of samadhi. (laughs) And everybody who who has been in samadhi, I mean, knows this thought. And that is already indication that we are that we are gone out of samadhi already because we already decide to stay longer, and that is impossible. Samadhi is where thoughts and memories are stopping, and when thoughts and memories are stopping, the whole world stops. The whole world of imagination, the desire stops for a moment, and that's it. Yeah, and that's why we why we find it so great. And that's why we want to go back. There's no fear, there's no loneliness, there's nothing of all these problems that we have. But we love these problems. We love to create these problems. The moment we come out of samadhi, we already start to create this problem. And we have only problems the moment we think. If we don't think, we have no problems. Isn't that amazing? But we love to think. (laughs) We are born to think. We think about this, we need to think about that, we need to think about that. And I don't know how many times, how many hundreds or thousands or millions of times we have had the same thought. And we can't let go of this thought. We need to think it again and again and again, yeah? in variations. Yeah? And what does it give us? The feeling that we are there. In the moment when we are in Samadhi, there is no feeling that we are there. We are happy. And that's what we are longing for. We are longing for happiness. Happiness. And that arises in the heart, that arises in the chitta, not in the khandas. Huh? The five khandas, what is the five khandas, the body? Huh? Feeling, memory, association. <clears throat> so happiness arises in the chitta. It can, be a, it can be a bodily feeling, it can be a mental feeling, but it can also be a, a, a feeling outside of this. And all what we need to do is just stick to one point. Be it the breath or be it the Buddha, or, or be it the combination of the breath and Buddha, Buddha with, put with breathing in and go with breathing out, and that's all what we need. And why can't we still do it? Huh? Why? Why are we still hankering on to these thoughts and memories, huh? What, what, kind of, what kind of reality do they bring you? The reality is, when you close your eyes, is that what you feel? That's reality. That's the only reality you live in. The sensations that come into the, into the body, you know, or the, or the, or the feeling. Yeah, that's it. That's real, yeah? And everything else is made up through thoughts and memories. Ah, oh, yesterday I had a nice meditation. Why is it not good today? And so on, all these things. <laughs> what was yesterday was yesterday and not today. Yeah? And we have to live in the present moment, yeah? not, not in the past. And we want to change things that, you know, yeah? we, we see things that we have done in the past that weren't good. Yeah? We can't change these things. The word that has left our mouth cannot be taken back. The action that has done, that we have done through our body cannot be taken back. And when do we realize that? When do we ever realize that that these things are gone? And if we would have had a little bit of sati, then we wouldn't probably have said that word, yeah? Or that sentence. Or this action. But we don't have sati. We don't have this awareness of knowing what is going on in our chitta. Knowing that that at the moment the the chitta wants to think. The moment we know there is attention to thought, we can stop it. The moment we see, you know, in what kind of direction the thought is going, we can stop it. But we don't have that speed. 
We don't have that awareness. That's why we fall. Oh, yeah, a train of thoughts, yeah. Oh, I've been lost, yeah. I've been lost in my memories, I've been lost in my thoughts. And then we return back. And then we have to return back and return back and return back to the Buddha, to the breath, until we know what is going on in the chitta. We know when the sensation comes in and we know how the chitta wants to react to the sensation and we don't allow it. Because the moment we see the sensation, we go back to the Buddha. We don't let it react. That's where we can stay in the present moment. But no, what will we do? Oh, it's so hot, it's so hot. Yeah? Instantly, you know, we create this world yeah? of sensations and things. And the moment we create these labels, yeah? no matter what kind of label it is, it's good or it is nice or it is not so nice, then we have this problem. If you don't create a label, if you just stay with a the feeling, then there is just a feeling. The feeling can be neutral, the feeling can be positive or the feeling can be negative. And then we stay with the feeling and we know anicca, we just talked about it, it arises and ceases. And if we don't hold on to it, it ceases very quickly. But we try to hold on to it. We want more of it. We want more of it or want to get rid of it. For instance, if it is pain, we want to get rid of it. If it is a mud, we want more of it. But it does, this is not the way that we create the soap bubble. We have to understand how these feelings are created. We have to understand how these memories come into play. We have to understand how the chitta is working, how the, talk, how the clock is ticking. We don't understand it. And we go for the things that, you know, that, are, that we learn from, from the moment we were born, yeah? by our parents. They taught us, our teachers taught us in school, and if we went to universities, our profs told us this. And they all try to figure out how this is working, how the world is working, how the human beings, you know, appeared on this planet. They never read the Buddha, <laughs> Buddha's teaching. I mean, it's not the first planet that we have been on. Yeah? This planet has five civilizations. What do we know about the previous civilization? This is the fourth civilization. What do we know about the previous civilization? The third civilization on this earth. What do we know? Nothing. Or little, we heard something about Atlantis, yeah? And then before that, the second civilization on this earth. And what do, they, what do, what do the scientists assume? Yeah? <coughs> we come from the apes, huh? <laughs> the apes are animals, huh? we are human beings. Huh? There's the animal realm, and that is the animal realm. There's the human realm, that's the human realm. There's the deva realm, that's the deva realm. There's the ghost realm, that's the ghost realm. Yeah? And it has been there for, for billions or trillions of years. We just change the planet. When this planet dies, we, we look for another planet. And how many planets have we been on? The Lord Buddha said, you know, there are some planets, you know, where there are only two civilizations because it has a very short life. And other planets, you know, and this is, this is a very precious planet, the Earth. It, it will have five civilizations. So we are the fourth, you know, the moment our civilization disappears, the next civilization comes, and then it is the end of the Earth. <clears throat> If we would listen to, to a teacher, you know, to the Lord Buddha, then we would know. And, and then we see, you know, I mean, most of the science is just made up. Because they want to understand, but they really don't understand. And that is really the definition of avicca. Wanting to know, not but, but not being able to know. Wanting to understand, but not being able to understand. Wanting, yeah? That's where the will comes in. That's where the desire comes in. Wanting to know, wanting to understand. And then we, we send all these space shuttles into the space, you know, wanting to explore, you know, I'm in this universe. Yeah? <clears throat> Maybe finding our old planet, but that has, has been destroyed, yeah? and that we have lived before. Yeah? Or finding the next planet that we, go we are going to live after this planet has died. And there's no end to it. 
this life, you know, goes to end, you know, and then because we, we, we love, you know, we, we, we love being a human being or being, you know, we love being, you know, and that's why we go into the next life, and in the next life, and in the next life. Just like people who are addicted to video games. Huh? What do they do? When game over, yeah, they start again. And sometimes they start the same game, just like we. Hmm? Sometimes, you know, we, we come back as a human being and are farmers. Huh? And then the next life we are farmers again because we, we know we, we haven't really understood it. Yeah? And then we become farmers for seven lives and then we change to become soldiers. Yeah? And, and then we are soldiers for seven lives and then we become doctors or whatever. Yeah? Scientists or <clears throat> maybe become even the king yeah? or a governor. And then, then we fall down huh? from the oppressor to the oppressed. That's actually a German saying. Yeah? The oppressor of today is the oppressed of tomorrow. Or the oppressed of today is the oppressor of tomorrow. <clears throat> actually, German, German is a very nice language. It has lots of these sayings. Yeah? I don't know where they picked it up. It has a lot of Dhammas there. <clears throat> anyway, When do we want to end? Huh? There is a door. It is in front of us. And it is in front of us because we hear the Lord Buddha's teaching. That's why we see there is a door. But actually to, to, to get our courage, you know, and, and then go towards this door and then open this door that is completely rusty. <laughs> huh? It's a hard, hard work. Very hard. So it is us. And then we see it is so hard, and then we stop. Oh, it's so difficult. Let's rest for a moment. Let's rest for a moment. Yeah? Yeah? Let's go back in the world and enjoy the, yeah? enjoy the senses. And then we see, you know, the senses doesn't really bring us happiness. Then we go back. Okay practice a little bit, you know, and then say, oh, it's too hard, it's too difficult. And then we go back. Then we're constantly swinging forth and back, swinging forth and back, going forwards, you know, and then going backwards, going forwards, going backwards. There are only a few people. Huh? What, what, are, what are the four kinds of people? Pata Parama, the people who have no choice. And 70% of the population have no choice but to go to hell. 30% of the population have a choice. They're interested in Buddhism. Yeah? Today they keep the five precepts, tomorrow they don't keep. Then they keep them again, then they don't keep. That's called the naya, the swinging forth and back, or opportunists. Yeah? But from these 30%, there's 1% who needs just to know that there's a door and then they run towards this door. Some of them are slow running and others yeah, are very fast running. So some of us, at the time of the Lord Buddha, yeah, there were some people, you know, who quickly understood Anya Kondanya. Yeah? You remember? I mean, he just listened to the teaching of the Lord Buddha and at the end of the sermon, I mean, he got it. He got it. He understood. Nowadays, <laughs> there are hardly any people. If you look at the Thai masters, they had all to work very hard. <laughs> To get yeah? Lumpuman, you know, I really, it took him how, how many years did it take him? Twenty years or thirty years, yeah, to <clears throat> to reach a higher stage. Didn't take him too long to reach a stage of anakami, but then you know, to stage uh, the stage of arahant it took a long time. Lungda Mahaboa nine years, yeah? Lumpukau twenty years, and so on. Yeah, it's and. They were not just sitting there, you know, and, and uh, oh yeah, I should do some meditation <laughs> once in a while. They were hard working. Yeah? They went through the forest, yeah, Lumpu Chab. They went through the forest, you know, meeting tigers, sitting in front of tigers, sitting in front of cliffs, sitting on the path of a tiger to overcome their fear. And we? Ah, oh, it's too much. Let's rest. <laughs> So, it's, it's, it's completely up to you, the choice that you take. Probably we, the life at the time of, of Lumpuman was very tough, so I mean, they, they had no, yeah, it was easier for them. 
For us, it is very comfortable. We have houses, you know, we have cooties, we have nice cooties, you know, we are protected very well, we fed very well, and that's why we become lazy. <clears throat> At the time of, of Lumpuman, there was no coffee, there was no panna and nothing, yeah? <laughs> They had sometimes some more, yeah, I mean, these, these, these water olives, yeah, when, when they were lucky. And, and sometimes, I mean, Lumpur Man was living on rice, on pure rice, you know, for three months. Because the people here, yeah, they were poor and they didn't want to give him anything else than rice, just pure rice. So, but we, yeah. So it's completely up to you. And make a choice, yeah? I mean, the door is in front of you, the Lord Buddha. Yeah? The teaching of the Lord Buddha is still alive. And what did the Lord Buddha say? Where, wherever there are, Soda, Pana, Sakata, Kami, Anakami, Arahants, that's where the Buddhism is still alive, where the teaching of the Lord Buddha is still alive. And it is here in Thailand. When you think about Thailand, and you remember all these Arahants that were born here, about 100. And when, then you look at other countries, how many Arahants are in the West? Zero. Huh? How many Arahants are in, in Laos or, or, or in, in Myanmar or Cambodia? Maybe one or two or three, or Sri Lanka. So, here in Thailand, that's where Buddhism is alive. And that's it's still alive, but we don't know how many years. People are getting too comfortable. People, yeah, if, when you look at the younger monks, yeah, they, they don't want to stay at the same monastery. After three months, they want to spend another monastery. They don't want to be trained anymore. It's the same thing. It goes down. The monk would go down here in time. Lunga said it 20 years ago already. Yeah? And it didn't become better. <clears throat> But still, we can see the door. And it's now up to us to walk towards the door. And how do we do it? Sila, Panya, Samadhi, Panya. The fourth noble truth. First getting the mind calm, then <coughs> investigating of the five khandhas, the things that we believe we are. And of course, when we are here in the monastery, we keep the silas, there's no question about it. When we are in the monasteries, we keep the eight precepts, not only the five precepts. And we even have one tudanga that we eat only once a day. <clears throat> so, it should, it should help, but we have to practice, and we have to practice as much as we can. The moment we wake up, and we start to practice, buto, 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 or, yeah, lam hai chai kao, lam hai chai ok. Anapanasat, until the evening until we are tired. And normally we don't sleep more than four or five hours. And then we get up again. Overcoming tiredness, overcoming pain, overcoming restlessness, huh? overcoming boredom. These are all the hindrances that we have to fight in the beginning. And it might take months, you know, to fight these hindrances. Boredom, restlessness, all these things. What is boredom? What is restlessness? What is pain? We never ask these things. Huh? We put a label on it and we don't want it. Instead of understanding what is going on in our chitta, we just put a label on it and say, I like it, I dislike it. That's what we normally do. And that's why we don't get any further in our practice. Okay, enough for today. Are there any questions? Mikam Tame? Payam Noi. Kayan man priyan. Is the pursuit of the lucid dreaming a valid practice? The pursuit of li- lucid dreaming? You learn how lucid dream. Is that useful? No, it's not useful. What is, I, I just told you what is useful. Samadhi? Yeah? And then investigation of all the things that we don't, don't like. Yeah? All the things yeah? like pain, yeah? boredom, restlessness. Yeah? 
That's the first thing before we can even start with investigating this body. Lucid dreams will come by themselves. Huh? There is no need to investigate. Lumpur Man had lucid dreams or nimitas, called nimitas. And he didn't understand it. Only after a few years he understood. So what is the point of a lucid dream if you don't understand the meaning of it? Huh? Get into samadhi, get the mind completely quiet, quiet, until there's nothing happening there. Or if you can, go even into Appana Samadhi, the deep state of Samadhi where everything disappears. Where you see, you know, when you come back, that this world is nothing else than an illusion. That we live in. That we create. That we help to create. Just like all the other people. Just like we create airplanes or cars. Yeah? It's not only one person who creates us. Lots of people, you know, work together to create it. And that's the way how we created this world. But also all, all these different realms. It's a big, big game, video game. Yeah? And we stuck, got stuck in it. And now it's the way for us to find out. You understand that, Asa? Huh? The important thing for you at the moment is not to read any books or, 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 or go after your dreams. It is to get the mind completely quiet until there's no more thoughts and no more memories coming up. And then go even deeper until the mind becomes one-pointed. Okay, understood? So, my me come time, eh? My me. Tema, me come. Do you have any question? Not yet. Yeah. Two days ago, when sitting samadhi. It, it will not happen on the first time. What, what, what you can do is making it more interesting yeah, to know what is going on there, then, then the fear, you know, will, will subside. But if you're more interested into the fear, then the fear will stop you. But you have to tell you before that. Let's see what has happened. Whatever can disappear, let it disappear. What stays on, that's what I want to know. Yeah, it takes time. Be, be patient. You know, it took time to learn to walk. It took time to learn to talk. Didn't, <clears throat> didn't happen on the third try. Yeah. Sometimes you have to try it ten, ten times, hundred times, thousand times. And some people have to try it a million times before it works. And it also depends on the day. You know, some days it is easier, some days it is more difficult. Just like Lunga Mahabhava said, then sometimes, you know, he went into Apana Samadhi after an hour, and sometimes, he, you know, it took him 11 hours of fight to, before, he, before the chitta was able to go into Apana Samadhi. So, just know this, and then don't, don't give up. Yeah? Just say, okay, it doesn't work today. Yeah? Let's try it. Try it again. And then try it again, and try it again, and one day it will work. Okay? No more questions? Yeah? <clears throat> ah, I need... Uh,